It's brutal. It's violence. And yet, more and more people are watching. Tuning into a sport that was once banned from television for being too bloody. Now, cage fights are prime time TV events. And mixed martial arts, MMA, is a billion dollar industry. But far from the spotlight of the UFC, everyday Americans are stepping onto the mat. I think that what you're going to see over the next several years is guys who would have played baseball, basketball, football will be coming involved in mixed martial arts instead. We meet an all-American guy. Ever since the first day I, I came and tried it out, I've loved it. It's like a drug. And a female fighter with big expectations. I hope to go pro as soon as I can. That's why I go to practice every day, because I want to fight in a stadium. In places you'd expect, and in places you wouldn't. Because studying this portion of scripture was like a kick in my own teeth. Including this church, where cage fighting and the Bible go hand in hand. Jesus is he's the ultimate fighter. He fought death, hell, and the grave and won. Got my savior there, Jesus. If I put my hands together, it says, fear God. For some, MMA offers a chance at the dream. Where I'm from, you know, I grew up hard and on the street. I've done this to feed my family. For others, those dreams have been crushed. She hits me with this left hook. And instantly, I knew that there was something definitely wrong. This is a raw, behind-the-scenes look at the phenomenon that is mixed martial arts. This is cage fighting in the USA. going to throw knee. So we're going to be here, you're going to throw your right, yes. then you're going to come, yes. okay, or you're going to come. Yes. Savant Young is a professional mixed martial arts fighter, a 13-year veteran of the sport. I need that motion, one, two, three. Savant has got some power. If you type in his name on YouTube, it only takes 15 seconds to see how he earned the fighting name, Black Superman. Five years after this match, Savant now spends more time teaching other fighters than he does knocking them out. This is probably the worst position to be in. This means you get, you're about to get your ass kicked, okay? Savant is the co-owner of Fight Academy, a gym in Pasadena, California, that specializes in mixed martial arts. I'm over. Or MMA. And I'm gonna hold the leg. Definitely hurts, okay. <laughs> Gyms like Fight Academy are springing up all over the country. There you go. And in 2010, over 2.5 million Americans trained or fought in MMA. Many trained to simply stay in shape, but everyone in this class wants to fight. When guys walk in here fresh off the street saying they want to fight, I'm like, you know, some people want to be doctors or whatever, but you don't just walk into the hospital. You got to go through all the prerequisites, go through the training, because at the end of the day, it's a pretty serious consequence to being not prepared to do this sport. Mixed martial arts combines multiple combat sports, like wrestling, boxing, and jujitsu. Because competitions are often held in a cage, it is also known as cage fighting. While fans of MMA love the highly technical side of the sport, they also celebrate the raw brutality. 
fan-made knockout videos like these routinely go viral online. Despite the extreme nature of mixed martial arts, many who follow it feel that MMA is now on the verge of becoming one of America's marquee sports. Now, a new era begins. A partnership with the world's fastest growing sport. In the fall of 2011, Fox began airing these promos, announcing their new television deal with the Ultimate Fighting Championship, or UFC, MMA's most prominent brand. Come together. The promos point out that for the first time, UFC fights will be shown during prime time on a major network, joining the NFL, Major League Baseball, and NASCAR. Now we're, uh, again, in a position where we have this opportunity to, to go mainstream. MMA has come a long way since the 1990s, when it was banned from American television for being too violent. If this fight goes 30 seconds or 30 minutes, this is going to be a fight right here. But 45 states now allow MMA fights. And UFC president Dana White feels that the sport's momentum is unstoppable. He sees massive gains on the horizon in both viewers and fighters. I think that what you're going to see over the next several years is guys who would have played baseball, basketball, football will be, you know, becoming involved in mixed martial arts instead. This is what kids are taking, women, men, all over the world. 23-year-old Mark Scholving takes classes and trains with savants. You can go ahead. I can? Up to you. Oh, this is great. His favorite sport growing up was volleyball. Wow. But for the past couple of yeah, years, pretty, he's been learning pretty, how to fight. Around. The floors you can feel is kind of different yeah. from the actual mat itself. So as a fan, I'm actually pretty excited to be here right now. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see it from the inside, yeah. yeah. Go! Definitely, ever since the first day I, I came and tried it out, I've loved it. You know, it's like a drug. Nice. nice. Go again. You know, I'm up at 4 every morning, and I don't get home until 9 o'clock at night, so I don't do a whole lot of it. Other than that, I'm just trying to recover and sleep. Switch it over! In a week, Savant will put on a night of amateur MMA bouts. The fights will take place in the gym's own MMA cage. The event will be just one of thousands of fight nights in America this year. For many of the fighters, it will be a test to see if they have what it takes to one day turn professional. Put your MMA gloves on and get a pat. Crystal Lazama will be fighting for the first time. Yeah, it's super fun and addictive. Yeah, addictive? Like, when you learn something and you get it down, it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, what else can I learn? Yeah. It's super fun. Nice, solid punches. Savant, who has 22 professional fights under his belt, isn't surprised that more and more people like Mark yep. and Crystal want to step into the cage. Nice. I think anybody that's a competitor at heart, they seek out different ways to test themselves. And with fighting, this is the ultimate way to test your manhood or, or womanhood. I feel that all in my forearm. And to give yourself that true test of what you're made of. That's it, bro. Good work. Leg is heavy, dude. I'm tougher, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm all right. You know what I'm saying? So do you think there's going to be some blood on this uh, cage on Saturday? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a possibility of it. Hopefully it won't be your blood, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky. Fight Academy on three. One, two, three. Up next. I'm a Christian, and I believe that I've been given these talents from the dude above. And later, Mark and Crystal enter the cage for the first time. two things promised to you in this life is pain and death. You're guaranteed to suffer and you're guaranteed to die. I accept it. I accept it. You know, I accept death. I've stared death in the face a million times and all I can say is it's like if you're scared to get knocked out, you probably shouldn't fight. 
kind of a street kid, you know what I mean? So even before I learned how to box, I was street fighting in backyard brawling with my buddies with little boxing gloves. Tim Abel is a local MMA fighter who earned the name One Punch in his first MMA fights. With the first jab he threw, Tim broke his opponent's nose. Tim discovered the sports during a turbulent time in his life. On my hand, I got, that's my inner demon. You know, everyone's got one of them you gotta cope with. I got into hard drugs when I was like 15. Snorting coke, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, hallucinogens, pretty much everything. And then, thank God, by the time I was 22, I found the MMA. But Tim's sobriety would be short-lived. I got injured in MMA. I broke a rib in my chest. The doctor had gave me, you know, a couple refills of 40 pills and Percocet 30s. Now I'm 29. With the propensity for addiction, Tim quickly picked up a massive pill habit. When I was at the worst of it, I was doing probably 20 painkillers a day. Seven days out of a seven-day week, I'm doing pills all day long, all night long. I am literally couldn't even get out of bed, couldn't do anything without taking pills first. How did you get off the pills? I, uh, I just quit cold turkey. For Tim, the 19 days of withdrawal were pure hell. But halfway through, he started reading a Bible, and he decided to commit his life to Christ. I've got my Savior there, Jesus. I've got my big cross. And then on my knuckles it says, pray. I've got the banner that was above Jesus' head means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Studying this portion of scripture was like a kick in my own teeth. This text is what it is, and it's going to be like a spin kick up to the side of your head. I mean, that's what it's going to be like. Every Sunday, Tim attends Canyon Creek, an evangelical church led by Pastor Brandon Beals. We were sinners that Jesus saved. We were once lost, but now we're found. That's what unites us. What makes Pastor Beals unique and first drew Tim to this church is that Pastor Beals is a diehard fight fan and even goes by the nickname, the Fight Pastor. Uh, Anderson Silva's my favorite UFC fighter. Run into, run into Anderson all the time. Um, I have lots of pictures with Uriah. Uriah's at everything. Uh, my favorite thing about Uriah is that he's about this tall, but his stinking hands are this big. I mean, you think about all the opportunities that Jesus would have had to quit. Um, he was ridiculed. He was beaten. He was whipped. They took a crown of thorns and they shoved it on his head. And the entire time, I mean, he could have at any moment called down a legion of angels and said, we're done. Okay, you guys lose. But instead, he kept fighting, and he never quit. And I think it's the ultimate metaphor for that, is Jesus is he's the ultimate fighter. He fought death, hell, and the grave, and won. As the fight pastor, Beals travels around the country and ministers both amateur and professional fighters, praying with them before they step into the cage. He hosts fight nights at church, where attendees watch live UFC bouts on TV and he encourages fighters to attend services at Canyon Creek. Of late, more and more of them are showing up on Sunday. Over the last year and a half, the ministry has grown and fighters have kind of reached out to us and said, hey, I don't have a pastor, but I believe in Jesus. And the church that I used to go to doesn't understand my love of fighting, doesn't understand that that's what I want to do for a career, but I need some spiritual guidance. First time I went to church, um, I had a whole idea of what it was going to be like. I figured it was just going to be some old dude in a suit, waving his hand around, holding the Bible, yelling at everyone, telling them if you don't accept Jesus into your heart, you're going to rot in hell in the lake of fire and this and that. Immediately when I met Pastor Brandon, they got, you know, they're wearing Ed Hardy shirts and they got tattoos. I think God's enlightened Brandon. Here's what you started thinking. I brought friends today. Pastor Beals believes that embracing MMA allows his church to connect with young men 
who otherwise may not be interested in the Bible. But Beale says that many in the Christian community have a hard time reconciling the teachings of Jesus and a brutal sport like mixed martial arts. I get asked that a lot. I thought, you know, Jesus says to turn the other cheek. How can you be a minister that supports a physical sport like mixed martial arts? I view MMA as a sport, first and foremost. And uh, it happens to be a combat sport. But I mean, it's just as violent as football. And so when Jesus said, turn the other cheek, I mean, it wasn't ever meant in an athletic arena. Since I had Jesus in my life, and I am a Christian and believe in God, I believe that I've been given these talents from the dude above. My name's Tim, I'm 28. I've lived most of my life with a heart full of pride and a head full of anger in the fast lane. And I'm just here to just, you know, do a 180 and head back the other way. Five months ago, Tim was baptized by Pastor Beals at Canyon Creek. He has been attending church and avoiding pills ever since. The thing that I look at Tim is I think he is a living example of how Jesus can take what the devil meant for evil and do good out of it. I mean, that is the type of guy that if he completely commits his life to Christ, grows in his faith, I mean, talk about a testimony. I mean, he's a living example of somebody whose life was a mess and God turned it into a message. Yeah, if I put my hands together, it says, fear God. It says devil this way, and then if you turn it upside down, it says angel. My hope for Tim beyond anything is that, you know, Tim completely surrenders his life totally to Jesus, and that was the conversation I had. I said, you're to the point where you've got kind of a foot in the church, a foot with Jesus, and you still have a foot in your old life. Tim has been trying to book his next MMA fight for months. It's one of his only potential sources of income. I've been broke. I don't have cars anymore. I don't have fancy jewelry. I don't have none of that. I've stayed completely away from it. And it has not been easy. Next. I didn't know exactly what had happened. I just knew that there was something definitely wrong. The bloody side of MMA. And later. I am scared for you if you do this. I do not see this going well. Mixed martial arts is a sport dominated by men. But increasingly, women are attending matches, training, and even stepping into the cage themselves. It's grown so much. It's been much more acceptable for girls to do it. When I first started, every once in a while you'd get flack from people, you know, the whole, you should be a ring girl. More and more girls wanted to not be the ring girl and would rather get in there and uh, go to town. I love getting hit in the face. I probably have issues, but you know. Emma had her first professional fights over six years ago. She has even fought in Korea and Japan countries where the sport of women's mixed martial arts packs stadiums. But all of those fights have had a cost. At the end of this fight, I had a baseball size bump on the top of my foot. This hand got a little messed up. My knuckle got pushed down to here. My coach had to, he just pulled it out. I don't know, it hurt. <laughs> but broke this hand, broke this arm, broke my nose had 200 cc's of fluid removed from my right knee. Through all of those injuries, Emma kept fighting until she stepped onto the mat for what would be the last time. I'm gonna fast forward to the moment, okay? okay. Here's Sarah and me fighting. And she hits me with this left hook. Instantly, I was having vision problems. I saw three of everybody, and she was coming at me, and I was practically running away. I didn't know if my face was 
crying. I didn't know exactly what had happened. I just knew that there was something definitely wrong. I went in and uh, got the CAT scan, and that's when they let me know that my face was broken. The doctor said that my face has receded a millimeter, and that the double vision was permanent, so. Despite her gruesome injury and subsequent forced retirement, Emma still thinks that other women should train and fight. I think anybody that has the courage to get up and actually get into the ring is already a winner. So it doesn't matter if you win or lose the fight. If you have the courage to get up there in front of a crowd and put yourself out there, like you're a badass and you've proved yourself. You know, that's how I want to go into every match. You know, I put in all my hours. Crystal, who we first met at Fight Academy, is three days away from her first MMA match. What do people say when you say you're a fighter? The initial reaction is just silence. And then they're like, oh, like in the cage or the UFC? I think it's still more OK for a guy and less, you know, for me to do it. So they kind of think I'm crazy. All right, time to clean. In addition to training five hours a day, Crystal has a full-time job as a waitress. This is like Mr. Miyagi training and go wax on, wax out. <laughs> so it's not wax, it's like barbecue sauce. <laughs> So what's your dream come true? Where do you want to be in like five years from now? I want to have won the belt for women's champion. I want to be the best pound for pound female fighter. I hope to go pro as soon as I can. That's why I go to practice every day because I want to be consistent and I want to be pro and I want to fight in a stadium. We got three hard days, and then we got the fights on Saturday. Before Crystal can turn professional, she will have to fight as an amateur. You can't get tired today. And she will have to win. Let's go, Crystal. Pick it up. Fight someone in the gym, period. You know what I mean? Everybody think it's all about the punching and kicking and who, what kind of submissions, you know. It's all about who quits first. Nice. Let's go, Crystal. This is the last week. This is it. So you wouldn't agree if I said it's definitely a man's sport? No, 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 not at all. There's some tough, uh, there's some very tough women that do this sport, and Crystal's one of them, as I know her opponent is as well. Crystal's opponent, Norma Martinez, has a background in boxing and taekwondo. She is known for her striking, and unlike Crystal, she has had a few underground MMA fights. I think Norma is a little bit older, a little more, more wiser, you know. We filmed Norma's last training session before the fight. Her coaches were feeling pretty good about her chances. Body's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal and Norma will be squaring off at Fight Academy, where the gym will be transformed into an MMA arena. For his part, Savon feels the battle between the two women will be fierce, which is why he has made it the main event of the night. It's always about the guys. Yeah. You know, it's always about the guys. So uh, this time I'm going to let the girls get out there and shine and do their thing. And I know they're going to put on a show. The girls don't play, man. When they come fight, they come to fight. This is the first and most important fight of my life. It's going to be my career. Come on. Huh. Break. Nice work. Up next. I'm talking heroin, crank, ecstasy, pain pills. There's nothing to do around here. It's like a suburban nightmare. Yeah. Good enough. It's on my way, right? <laughs> Since we last saw him, Tim Abel has been training nearly every day. 
the hooks in there, you go. But he still can't find his next pro fight. And as a recovering addict, he finds himself surrounded by temptation. What's, uh, what's this place like, this neighborhood? Oh, well, I live in a place called Snohomish County. Um, for as small as our county is, we have one of the biggest drug producing counties in the nation. I'm talking heroin, crank, ecstasy, pain pills. We've had just as many drug busts as any other big major city. It's just, there's nothing to do around here. It's like a suburban nightmare. I know when enough is enough. Tim has decided to leave Washington and move to California, where he hopes fights will be easy to come by. Heavenly Father, right now, I thank you first off for the brutal honesty that is being displayed in this place right now. Tim is nervous about how Pastor Beals will react to his plans. What's up, dude? Not a whole lot. Same old stuff, different day. All right, man. Well, let's, let's talk. Um, I have not seen you in forever. Yeah, I've been going through it the last month. I'm going back to Cali. It's just a burnt out situation for me here. Because I just want to train in a world class gym, you know, so I can get a world class opportunity. I'm going to tell you, you are going to regret this. I mean, I can't, even if I do regret it, I can't see how it's going to be any worse than it is here for me. This is rock bottom for me. The know. happiest that I have ever seen you in the two years that I've known you is when you were doing well with Jesus. What do I got up here then? What you got up here is people that are willing to help you and actually give you something that's different. Well, as a professional fighter, well, I can't do nothing up here. The paychecks are skimp. So I'm supposed to train six days a week at these gyms who tell me, oh, I can only get you a fight every one to three months and I'm gonna make $500 to show up and $500 to win. It can't be, it can't be any worse than what I got going on up here. I don't have anywhere to run to up here, man. I know you've got a ton of people in your life that do not believe in you. I believe in you. And I'm telling you, as somebody that feels pastoral responsibility for you, I am scared for you if you do this. I just, I do not see this going well. It has to go well. It's, I know the way that this goes. And I also know that nobody ever listens. So, I mean, you gotta, you're a knucklehead. You gotta go learn the hard way. The thing is, you are going to be useless if you're a whacked out drug addict. Exactly. That's why I want to leave this place. So you honestly think going from here to there is going to help you kick all this stuff? <sighs> Bro, I love you. Beyond anything, I don't care if you ever get your hand raised and win another fight again. I want to see you in heaven. That's all I care about. Your hope is Jesus. I know that. That's a fact. You're stubborn and convinced that you need to do this. Please let me at least help you in this process. There's little more that Beals can do other than to offer his blessing. He promises Tim help in finding a gym and a church in California. All right, dude, let me pray for you. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Lord, I thank you for Tim. God, I pray that he would be able to step outside of himself and see the situation for what it is, that he wouldn't make any drastic decisions. And God, I pray that you would just be with him, comfort him, even in this time right now. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, dude. I'll definitely take into consideration what he said. Uh, he's absolutely right that I have a track record of making poor decisions. But for once, I feel like this is something I've looked at from every angle, and all signs point to yes. I feel like this is what I need to do in my heart. Coming up, it's fight night for Mark and Crystal. up and I was like oh man this is for real like finally this is what we got to do to prepare for the fight you got to get your hair done my nails done oh, you get red? Ooh. fight academy fire red. it's the morning of her first fight and crystal Azama wants to look good before she steps into battle how does that feel like 
I mean, knowing that you have all that pressure and... This way, it sets the tone for the rest. Yeah. Women getting their hair done before a big night is pretty common at this salon, but this is the first time they have had a cage fighter as a client. I'm like boxing tonight. <laughs> you, you fight, fight? Yeah. You have a boyfriend? You <laughs> <laughs> want a man to eat. <laughs> uh, baby, you're not scared? No. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I put more time into this than I do in my job, so. I just know what Savant told me, and you know, that it's gonna be a tough fight. He told me it's gonna be a tough one, and just, you know, do our game plan and do what I've been training this whole time. You know, I expect to take hits. So I was preparing my family, I was like, going in for a fight, you're gonna get hit. I get so emotional, like, I'm, I'm so proud of her, like, she deserves every single one of the, like, everything about this. It's her fight tonight. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna, you know, throw my jab, hoping to take her down. I'm gonna drive her into the cage. And when we hit the ground, it's on, because I know all my wrestling, I know all my jujitsu. My hair right now. Crazy, I look different, huh? Look at that. You do look good on me. <laughs> I look Great different. Job. This is yeah. cool. Oh my god, I look completely different. Wow. Now you look like a fighter. Hi. Woo! You're sexy and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> At Fight Academy, the gym has been transformed into a full-out MMA venue. Mark and Crystal are among 22 fighters who will square off tonight. Our main event, Crystal, Lazarma, and Norma Martinez. Square off, ladies. It's the bunt. The scale first is going to be Mr. Mark Chauvin. 219.6. Mark is fighting 24 year old Renardo Palmer. 247. All 247 pounds of him. Renardo is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And like Mark, this is his first official MMA fight. Crystal. Before the fight, each participant must get their blood tested and pass a physical with the doctor on site. Are you scared of um, getting hurt? I am scared of getting hurt. I mean, injuries happen all the time. I went to the emergency room twice this year. So that's in the back of my head, but I'm not going to let that stop me. You saw the stretcher passing by. All the emergency services are here. There's a, an ambulance outside. The EMTs are here as well. The chances of death in an MMA match are extremely low much lower than boxing or even football. But broken limbs, fingers, hands, and even eye sockets are not uncommon. 500 people will file into Fight Academy tonight. This event is just one of thousands of amateur and professional MMA fight nights that will take place in the United States this year. After the introductions, the fights begin. And from the start, the action is intense. Now you back them out. Yes. Nice. Nice, man. Since these are amateur fights, the winners receive no money. What motivates each fighter is different. Many would like to turn professional, maybe someday reaching the UFC. Some just do it for the challenge. 
and the adrenaline rush. Finally, after waiting in the locker room through eight other fights, it's time for Mark and his opponent, Renardo, to make their way to the cage. Leg kick, leg kick, leg kick, straight right. Do your work. Let that right hand go, Mark. Yes. Renardo catches one of Mark's kicks and takes him down. but Mark is able to escape. Stay composed, Mark. Let that right hand go. Sprawl, baby. Sprawl. Put him into the gate, Mark. Turn. Mark turns Renardo into the cage and lands some punishing kicks. But the ref calls Mark for a knee to the groin. Savant disagrees. Oh, my God. Come on. Mark. Mark comes out strong after the stoppage. Nice! Nice work! Nice work! But then suddenly, the fighters stop, and the gym goes quiet. Mark's knee has given out. He's just lost his first fight. <laughs> His knee just came out. Yeah. As news of Mark's injury reaches the locker room, Crystal is preparing to enter the cage. Next. This fight, it means everything. Hands up, hand move. This is your time right now. Academy, Mark has suffered a severe knee injury and has just lost his first fight. As Mark limps back into the locker room, it's time for Crystal to make sure she is physically and mentally ready for her fight. I know of a lot of fighters that they train all the time and then when they go to do their fight, they freeze or they just can't do it for whatever reason, the crowd, or they just freeze up. Norma Martinez. This fight, it means everything. It sets up the standard to the rest of my life. This is your time to do what you came here for. The women's card is the main event, the last fight of the night, and the crowd is on the edge of their seats. No matter what, hands up, head movement. Hands up, head movement. This is your time right now. For Crystal, a win here would be a big step towards her dream of one day becoming a professional cage fighter. Remember why you came here? And now you're here. Everybody else doubted you, but you're here. And I know you're ready. Do your work. I'm proud of you. All right? Take 
Take your time. Establish the move. Establish your base, Crystal. Let's go. It takes Crystal all of 45 seconds to completely pummel her opponent, who gives up and taps out. Very good, very good. Crystal, deep down, truly has a real desire to be a fighter. From the first day I met her, she came in here and she showed me that she was willing to do anything that it took to be a fighter. 10, 15 years ago, there weren't any female fighters really doing MMA, but I feel she would have been willing to fight a guy just to get that respect. So she definitely has the grit to be a professional fighter. You said you, you put in a lot of work. What do you mean? Just training every day. Sorry. I feel like, uh, you know, I just feel all the hard work I put into it. I was just recognized for it and he acknowledged it. When I won, it wasn't just me winning. It was like my family, my friends, the whole gym. So it's a great feeling, knowing that you accomplished and just training for it. For her thrilling victory, Crystal is awarded Fight of the Night. We put our name on the line, you know, you got all these people coming to see how our fighters do. So if our fighters come out here and get the ass kicked, I'm not going to have a line of people out here Monday wanting to sign up to my gym. You know, us as a gym, we're Fight Academy, so if you're not fighting, you know, what's the point? Crystal is now one of the millions of Americans who are putting on MMA gloves and training to fight. For some, like former addict and out-of-work fighter Tim One Punch Abel, it is the light at the end of a dark tunnel. Today, despite his pastor's best advice, Tim is still planning on moving to California. Mark is recovering from his knee injury. Although he can't train, he tries to visit the gym at least once a week and says that he can't wait to get back into the cage. Emma Bush, the professional female fighter with double vision, now works nights as a paramedic. Emma still trains in MMA, though she says her days of cage fighting are behind her for good. Finally, for Crystal, she has her next amateur fight in two months. One she hopes will be her last before going pro. On the Monday after her victory, she worked a full shift at her waitressing job. Then, she showed up at Fight Academy, ready to train. 